So part of cryptozoology is to work with known species of science so that you can work with the unknown as well. And today we're going to do a deep dive into Ornithosuchids, a Triassic pseudosuchian, um, which just might be some stem dragons. And now, welcome to the presentation. Ornithosuchids, crocodile's weird, bird-like, Triassic great-great-uncle, and possibly stem dragons. But first, a brief intro into cryptozoology. Cryptozoology, crypto meaning hidden, zoo, animal, oology meaning study of. Put it all together, cryptozoology is the study of hidden or undocumented animals. So Bigfoot, Loch Ness. Now the holy grail of cryptozoology is dragons. But the first challenge in proving dragons existence is where dragons would have started in Earth's evolution. Now, as an archosaur, more specifically a pseudosuchian, dragons would have had its origins in the Triassic, and a relatively close cousin to crocodiles. So the first dragons would have been semi-aquatic. Because of that, ornithosuchids are the best case scenario as stem dragons. Ornithosuchids were a family of archosaurs, and more specifically, pseudosuchians, making them a close relative of crocodiles. In fact, the name means bird-like crocodile, as it was partially bipedal due in large part to a crocodile-reversed ankle joint. The best-known ornithosuchid is the flagship Ornithosuchus woodwardii. The Ornithosuchids lived in the Upper Triassic. The Ornithosuchids have only been found in a few sites in South Africa and Great Britain. I have the corresponding sites on the Pangaea map as well. As mentioned before, Ornithosuchids were pseudosuchians, so their closest modern-day living relatives are crocodiles, under the lower Cotta clay. As mentioned before, because of this, ornithosuchids are the most likely candidate to be stem dragons. Ornithosuchids woodwardine would have been the apex predator of the Triassic swamps and would have mainly eaten dicynodons. Most of the time, it would have been quadrupedal but could rear up bipedally for short distances due to the aforementioned ankle joint. This would have been very useful for them, as partial bipedalism can help an air-breathing organism such as Ornithosuchus woodwardii in the Triassic swamps as it pays to keep your head above water, making it quasi-aquatic. Being quasi-aquatic would have helped it to become dragons as well, as the first true dragons would have been semi-aquatic. Thank you for joining me today, and have a nice day. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, please subscribe to my channel and be sure to click the bell button so you don't miss any new videos. And while you're at it, please consider subscribing to my other channel here where I do a bit of a behind the scenes look at who I am, what I like to do in my free time when I'm not making videos so it's about cryptozoology. Thanks and I'll see you next time.